What the fuck, Ella? Why the hell did you let him? That wasn't what you wanted. I'd sort of assumed. Well, I'd imagine that. When I finally saw it again, like we bump into each other on a night out or in the Asda, that we'd clock each other, maybe double take or something. And I'd coolly, but assertively, approach her. And I'd say, Ella, nice to see you. You're looking good. Or something like that. Maybe a bit less cheesy. And then we'd catch up a bit. And then I'd say, eh, have you got a minute? If it's not too weird for you, like, I'd want to be polite and consider her feelings. I think you owe me an explanation. I just need to know what happened that night. Why you went. Why you never answered any of me calls or texts. Why I never saw you again. Because, sorry if this is a bit too much information, but I've had a lot of struggles. And I know it was a really long time ago, but it's really affected me. And, well, I've often thought if I could talk to you and find out, I could get some sort of closure and my life might be a bit better and I actually might be able to do normal stuff like hold down a relationship and that. And I think you owe me that. I'm trying to piece together what happened. And she'd apologize and she'd say that she was just young and she was working stuff out. And she would say, crucially, it was nothing to do with, it was nothing about my, uh, you know, performance. I feel sober now, still angry with myself, but sober. And it wasn't even about me. And she was sorry she didn't realize it would have hurt me, fucked me up that much. And then she'd smile. And then she'd intimate that she was impressed by my emotional intelligence and we'd have a hug or something and forgive and get over it. And maybe we'd even fall instantly back in love. So the last people were just about leaving. Me and Steve have gone upstairs like we planned because Maya had said we could stay over after the party. We go into the bedroom and we're proper giggling. It's all unicorns and princesses and shit. It feels a bit inappropriate for this special grown-up night we're gonna have. We're gonna spend a whole night together for the first time. And then we're on the bed. I'm not bothered about the unicorns anymore. We're kissing. His lips are so soft. It tastes like cockberg. The music goes off downstairs as his hand moves down from her back, my bum. I never knew I would feel comfortable being intimate with the lads, but I know Steve. We get each other. We share the same values, well, limits. We agreed ages ago we wouldn't have sex yet. I'd said I'm just not ready. I'm cautious because of the shitty relationships I've seen in my life with my mom and that. And he's a Christian, so he doesn't agree with sex before marriage anyway, so we're a good fit. But that doesn't mean we don't do other stuff. But it's not like that, is it? Nah. Instead, I'm here with Benno and the lads. We're in the middle of this very animated discussion about some bird Amara who Benno's been seeing. And he's talking about her dead disrespectfully, like he always does about women. He's one of them prehistoric gimps. You know the type. And then, all of a sudden, the lads go silent. So I turn around to see what's going on. And I'm thinking Amara's probably walking up or something, so I'm getting ready for some proper drama. And I'm sort of wanting Benno to get his comeuppance because he always gets away with shit. And when I turn around, it's not Amara. It's Ella fucking Jenkins. I hadn't seen the girl. Well, a woman. For must have been 10 years. Not since she ghosted me when we were 16. 
And here she is in the fucking merchants on a Friday night. So I'm pulling off his top. It's the one from River Islands. I bought him for his birthday. He knows, I think he looks that sexy in it, so he's worn it specially. He's trying to pull my dress off. It's really tight, so it's difficult. Well, it's not awkward between us. It's not like that. We're both laughing, and because of all the sides are in Prosecco, we find it extra funny. I give him a hand, and my dress is off. And we're touching each other. In the places we usually do, the ways we usually do. And then, it's a bit fuzzy, but he's like stopped me doing what I was doing to him with my hand. And he takes my knickers off, which is fine. And he gets on top of me. Also fine, like nice. And he moves my legs apart. And he's just sort of thrusting, like, against me. And I'm like, okay, I just think this is a bit different, but not in a bad way. And we're looking into each other's eyes. And I'm just staring at it. And she's staring at me too. And then, like in the next minute, he's it gone inside me. And I just sort of freeze. He's looking at me with this weird, intense look. I can usually tell exactly what he means with every look. And before I can scrape my jaw off the floor and go up to her in that. I don't know what this one's saying. There's something there. This tiny flicker in her eyes. And I recognise it. Because that same look was in her eyes that night too. Just before... Well, when we... While we... And I remember. I just wasn't sure. Like, it, it was all new to and us. And he must be able to tell oh, the something wrong time, like, because he says... So I checked. He says, I checked if she okay. was okay. Like, maybe it was pain or something. But I'm still frozen. So I asked her if it was hurting her. And then he says... She said it wasn't. Was it hurt? And all I say is, no, it doesn't hurt. Because it doesn't. And so I thought... And then he's going out again, but then he's going back in, but deeper. Well, how I remember it. And he's looking deep into my eyes, like he can see my soul, well, but I think. he can't see my soul, because if he did, he'd see that it is screaming out now. Shit, maybe I just hoped that that meant it was OK then. I don't know why I'm not telling him to stop. That she was OK with it. But I also don't know why he's doing what he's doing, why he didn't ask me if I wanted this. And then something in me just goes, well, we've done it now. We might as well carry on. Like it's too late now to say no or something. And he's telling me he loves me. And then it's over. I just lie here. My head's spinning with the Prosecco and the mess. And now, at the fucking merchant, we're looking at each other for the first time in all these years. And that same flicker is there again, in her eyes. I feel cold. I see it now. It's like she's, she's checked out. Everything's silent for a bit and then 
goes to me you okay he's stroking me hair and he's got this fucking stupid soppy grin on his face like He's asking if I'm okay, but he's assuming I am at the same time, so that's not really a question, is it? And then he starts to snuggle into me. Seriously? He's going to sleep. I'm so angry with myself. I feel like I've let myself down and let my mum down in some weird way too. Why the hell did I let him? <sighs> this is fucked up. I need to get out of here. And in that look of, I don't know, disappearance, all the things I didn't ask and didn't say that night come flooding back to me. All the things I could have asked and should have asked. I feel cold. I feel sick. I don't know what that was. I don't know if it was my fault. I do know that it felt wrong. I do know whatever it was, whatever you'd call it, me and Stay are over. And I don't know what to tell him, but one day I will. Then that mad, full but empty flicker look vanishes and metamorphosizes into something else. Something more focused, determined, confident. Stay. Can I have a word?